What's going on gamers? Chris here with the Raccoon Police Department and I've been brought forward today to bring back a thing from the past. A gaming peripheral that many people didn't even realize existed. It's the single greatest controller ever made. And it was inspired by this maniac wielding a chainsaw in Resident Evil 4. What is it you ask? Well let me show you. The Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw Controller, made for the GameCube and the PS2. This is the PlayStation 2 variant right here. It's incredible, it's amazing, it's gory, it's brutal, and it's got a pretty cool little backstory to go with it. So if you haven't seen this controller, let me give you a tour of the old blood splatter, and we'll get going right now. Before I get into this gory piece of gaming hardware, let me give you a quick little rundown on Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 was released in 2005 for the GameCube. It was a system seller, and it's still widely considered the best Resident Evil game in the franchise. And that's saying a ton with the amount of quality games Resident Evil's been putting out, especially the last couple years. People have been playing Resident Evil 4 nonstop since it came out, and it's been ported to pretty much every system since its initial release. Also in 2005, it went to the PlayStation 2, and that's where this variant of the controller came from. But before I talk about the controller itself, let's talk about the company behind the controller, Newbie Tech. Newbie Tech was a company that would basically make peripherals based on people's favorite gaming franchises. Street Fighter, Sonic, Resident Evil. They would take that theme and they would make a specific controller based on that. Sonic had its own, Street Fighter had a really cool controller, and they weren't just basic reskins. They didn't just put a couple stickers on it and call it good. They really made it a unique peripheral for a fan of that specific franchise. I believe Newbie Tech is now out of business, which is pretty unfortunate because they have made some really cool peripherals and they had a couple that didn't actually come out that looked awesome. But now, getting into the Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw Controller. Who is this inspired from? Well, if you've played the game, you know. The unofficial name of Chainsaw Man. The guy who makes you soil your drawers the first time you see him. He's a chainsaw wielding maniac who wears a burlap sack because he must have a butter face. That's my only reasoning behind it, because he can't see through that thing, although he doesn't seem to have a problem tracking me down and chopping off my head when I see him. He's the guy that nightmares are made of. In this game, he's not going slow. He's chasing you down, and he's got that chainsaw making all the noise behind you. So I'm guessing when Newbie Tech saw this madman, they're like, oh, that's what we're gonna make a controller off of that. And they ran with it. And they didn't just make a cool skin, they made a full on chainsaw, added some buttons to it, and that's what we have right here, ladies and gents. This thing right here comes packaged in a way that Leatherface himself would turn into a hardcore gamer if he could get his hands on this thing. It doesn't come in cellophane and bubble wrap, oh no. It comes packaged in what looks like a three-pane window from one of the dilapidated houses or cabins that you find yourself running through as you're trying to escape the horde. This right here is awesome. You look through the window and what do you see? You see blood splatter analyst dreams right here. This thing, I'll pop the top off, comes off, and you're left with a really cool felt bottom and a full-on case for the controller. Now the end does pop out as you can see, which really makes it neat, and it's the centerpiece of almost any gaming collector's collection. Because when you have this, you want people to see it. This isn't something you put kind of behind the box. This is right on top, right in the middle, front and center. You are screaming, hey, look at this bad boy. So just the actual packaging and the way it's presented itself is incredible. And it came out and it was 50 bucks when it was released originally, $50. And obviously with retro gaming being so popular, it's gone up in price. First things first, mine is not 100% complete. I believe there was some rocks that were supposed to be right underneath here on this felt. They were gonna have some blood on them. I'm missing that. And maybe it was just the GameCube variant, but I'm pretty sure the PlayStation 2 variant had it as well. Another cool thing about this controller, other than just being a really cool <laughs> chainsaw, I mean, it's literally a miniature chainsaw. You even hold it like you're gonna use it to chop down a tree, except you're looking for limbs. It actually has a chainsaw noise, although for some reason mine doesn't make it. There is an on-off switch on the bottom, which I believe is probably for that, so maybe there's some batteries I need to put in there. That's something I'm gonna get to a little bit later. And there's a port on the bottom so that you can plug in your controller cord, which is awesome. So when you have this thing showcased, 
in its case, you're not having cords hanging all over the place. It literally looks like it's a piece of hardware that's made to be shown off. It's a piece of fine art. And another cool thing about these is the blood splatter on the bar and on the handle and all over the chainsaw itself is unique to each individual controller. Each individual controller has a specific number that tells you what number you are in the pecking order of these controllers. So mine is 08816 and it says of 50,000. So I got 8,816. There is a ton of these controllers out. They're not super rare, but they are kind of expensive for a controller that, in my opinion, is pretty useless to game with, but we'll get to that in a second. What you can see is it has a unique blood splatter. It has a cool handle. It has a thumbprint. I've always wondered whose thumbprints are these on the top? Like whose fingerprints are these? Moving on to the actual button. This is where it becomes incredibly difficult to actually play a game. You have the L1 button right here, my left finger, the R1 button here, and then on the bottom you have the R L2 and R2. To me, you gotta use like your middle finger to hit those while trying to use your thumbs, which I don't know, I, I guess you need longer thumbs. I mean, you gotta have like ridiculous hands to hold this thing because I can't even reach the buttons without trying to like hit other buttons. It just isn't super comfortable. It's not super uh, useful and frankly, it's really just made to be a centerpiece of a collection, not necessarily made for gaming. But if you're one of those gamers that's played Resident Evil 4 a ton and you need a challenge and you want some style points, this controller is the way to go. I think it is cool that the actual pull cord works, even though mine doesn't make any noise. That's because it's either broken or I need to put new batteries in it. I think it's rad that when it's in its case, you can showcase it. It's not gonna have cords hanging all over the place. And I think it's cool that each individual of 50,000 has its own unique blood splatter. I don't even know how they would do that. To have a guy sitting in a room with a can of paint and just splattering it on 50,000 of these would take forever. So I don't know how the whole process went. And it's not like there's just a little bit of blood splatter. There's blood splatter like all over. So I mean, they had to really go out of their way and like put some blood splatter on this thing. You can actually hear, there's like a battery or something inside there. I don't know what that noise is for. Maybe it's the voice box so that the sounds come out of the bottom. Cause it's supposed to have the chainsaw sound coming out. So that's something I'm gonna definitely check out. Going back to the case itself, it's really neat because it says Resident Evil 4 on the top. It has a little logo that says Capcom. It tells you that you can raise and lower the chainsaw to make Leon raise and lower. Doesn't seem to work that well. And then it has like a little background on kind of like, you know, what it's based on, you know, what the pull cord does, the ergonomic design. It really kind of tells you all these things. Now, of course, ergonomic design, yeah, not really. And then it also has a space to house your game. So mine did not come complete because it was missing what I feel like are the rocks of blood and it didn't come with the game. And so for me, I didn't want to put my version in there because I'd like to get maybe a regular version that came with this controller and see if I can put one of the original games in there. I don't know if it has like a steel book case or anything, but it is kind of neat. So for me, this controller was on my bucket list of gaming peripherals slash games. It's something that I've always wanted. I don't even know why. You know, sometimes you just get these ideas in your head and you're like, I really wanna get this, but you know you're not really gonna use it. But this is one that I bought and I have no regrets. I am so happy I have this. It's a centerpiece of my collection. It's really a neat spot. And I love how the controller, even though I'm missing the button in the front here, houses the cord, which is really, really cool. So that way the cord's not hanging out. It's housed in a little drawer, even though I'm missing a little bit of the handle. For the most part, this is somewhat complete. You know, I'm not gonna change anything about it. I don't like to add stuff. I like to have stuff exactly as it was when I bought it. So this is gonna be absolutely perfect in my collection. It's something that if you wanna play Resident Evil 4 in style, if you wanna play it because you need a challenge, because you have owned it, then this is definitely gonna be one to pick up. If you wanna play this game, <laughs> with any other controller, that is my recommendation other than this one, but man, this is a really cool way to do it. And if you wanna play any other game with this controller, well then have at it. I can't imagine playing any game, a first person shooter, where you have to be quick with your reflexes with this controller. It's probably not gonna get the job done. But I love the art on the front and the sides. 
I think it's one of the coolest looking peripherals, one of the coolest and rarest controllers in the history of gaming. And frankly, I think Newbie Tech was onto something, but I just don't know how well they sold in terms of all their other peripherals. I think this is really cool. I think they sold a ton of these, obviously made 50,000. So it's not necessarily a rare item, but it is kind of expensive. And many of these are broken and they just weren't really taken care of when they came out. It was something that wasn't taken for granted. So to find it with the full case and stuff is still kind of a rarity at this point. So guys, that is your Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw Controller Overview. All right, guys, I gotta get back to slaying zombies, but let me know what you think of the Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw Controller. I picked it up, I love it, I played with it a little bit. It's hard, it doesn't make the gaming experience any better, but you know what it does make look better? my game room, because it looks awesome on the shelf. So let me know if you have this or if you have any other really cool gaming peripherals. For some reason, I like collecting peripherals as much as I like collecting games. And I frankly can't wait to find a few more unique designs that can add to my collection. So guys, until next week, new costume, new video, keep trolling, keep rolling. We'll see you next time.